Resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D Squared. Greetings, people of Earth. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian Held. How the hell are you, buckaroo? Oh, man, I'm doing all right. Um, Hey, look, I need to get some quick announcements out because next weekend is going to be super busy, right? So on Wednesday, September 5th, at the Sanger, there's going to be a Star Wars costume (gasps) contest. What you say? Yes, and I'm going to be one of the uh, guest judges there with the uh, ladies from the Lazarettes. That's going to be at 6 p.m. And this is all for the winner to get four VIP passes what? to the Star Wars in concert with the LPO at the Sanger on the 7th and 8th. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, wait, we're giving away tickets or they? They are. The okay. Sanger's giving away t- through this costume contest. So, show up, you know. Okay. Right. I it, think I'm confused, but okay. Wednesday. September 5th, 6 p.m., there is a costume contest at the Sanger. Okay, now I got it. For Star Wars. There you go. Okay. On the 7th and 8th is the concert for Star Wars. Also, on the 8th, at the Bad Wolf Bar and Grill in Gretna, Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be narrating for a group uh, doing Star Wars Episode One as it should have been. It's uh, (laughs) kind of a radio play that we're doing, and this is our, our rehearsal show. It's free show. If you want to come out and check it out, that's going to be starting at... Uh, 6 p.m. on the 8th. So, we'll, All righty, yeah, then. We'll get that shared out on our Facebook page. All right, let's set up the show real quick. Right. Uh, as always, we'll open up with top nerd news. And uh, we do have our boy Scungy, huh? Is he still in Vegas or wherever the hell he's at? He was in Indy last weekend for the GME conference with uh, GameStop, and okay. he will be giving us a recap on that. Ooh. And then yeah. we got a guest, huh? We do. Our guest is Mr. Chris Sanchez, the digital media manager for Mad Cave Studios, which is a comic book publisher. So he's got some announcements coming out related to a friend of ours. So we're going to hear oh, about that. Oh, yeah. I see what you did there. Yes. All right. And then how do we close out this show, Brian? With This Week in Geek History. But first. Top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by the Viridian Tea Company. Find them on Etsy. And now, your top nerd news stories. All righty, Brian. Let's start off with the controversy, because I just love a good squabble. Of All course right. you do. Stupid, stupid Twitter. Uh, we're just going to call it uh, declarativestatements.com. Okay. So, uh, Peter Dinklage, yeah. uh, a.k.a. Tyrion Lannister, he right. drinks and he knows things. Of That's course. Like, like me. And uh, so he is doing, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of the movie? He, he's Tattoo, the uh, the guy from Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island. Yes. So he's doing a documentary on the actor himself. And uh, a lot of people have always just kind of assumed that he was of either Filipino descent, something you know, along a Pacific Pan Islander. Right. And uh, he's not. He's French. He's French. Yes. And, and- the... the uh- Documentary is called My Dinner with Irv. There we go. Yes. Yeah, because that's his na- real name is Irv. Uh, dang it. All right, but <laughs> so here's the thing: people are now accusing him of whitewashing, and 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 what I guess what really gets my goat is the fact that people just look at things on the surface. It's it's almost it's like okay, well we see a guy who looks uh, pale and there's a guy who has very brownish skin. So it must be a whitewashing incident. But nobody decides to look at anything. They just immediately take the Twitter up in arms, get their panties all twisted, and they start accusing him of whitewashing. And uh, this is a guy who's actually stood up for people that had had characters whitewashed. He's stood up for, you know, uh, people with uh, disabilities and dwarfism as well. Right. And, and he was pissed basically because also the fact that in the article, it, it, with dwarfism, there's different styles. Different and traits. Right, yes. right. And so what, what, what he has and what Irv has are two, two completely different things. Right. And he finally came out and said, you guys have no idea what you're talking about. You need to just put your little torches and pitchforks away. Now, of course, I'm embellishing on his language right now. Right. But it's just something where it seems like 
people are looking to be outraged where where when we have exact instances of whitewashing like uh, I give you gods of Egypt yes. where where all, all the gods should have had olive or black skin yes. and they were all you know white dudes yeah, no, that is a legitimate case of whitewashing yeah. where where this is, and I think this is indicative of our society at large, mm-hmm. where so many people rush to conclusions, they don't want to dig in, they don't want to find out, which is a trait of geeks, right? Because we understand in depth of what's going on with things. Yeah, we know how to use Google. <laughs> well, we do, <laughs> yes. And it is unfortunate that, that this is happening. And, you know, they're trying to, you know, give tribute to Irv uh, Villachez, Oh yeah, uh, yes, and his yes. and his life, and and here we have to deal with this controversy. It's kind of ridiculous. And real quick, I want to mention, um, sort of the same thing happened with Wizard World here recently, right? Wait, what? Well, Wizard World rele- had a press release that came out uh, last week, uh, showing their full slate of shows for 2019, and of course, New Orleans is the first in uh, J- January 4th through 6th okay. is our show. But they just announced it, so there was this whole bunch of people out kind of on Facebook and stuff, who were like, is Wizard World coming back? I don't know if they're coming back. And it's like, guys, calm down. Yeah, right, right. right? They they have already stated last year that they're coming back. Right. I mean, and, I mean they, they had already said that that was going to be the first one on their slate. Yeah. It was the ones that were after that that they were concerned about. And uh, they are having cash flow problems, but, uh, you know, it, it happens in these big companies. So just make informed decisions and statements no it's really... easier to just just grab twitter grab your phone and just start tweeting insanely or you could go play xbox and then just curse out random people and throw out expletives and s- racial and and, and well, homophobic slurs if you want apparently you're referring to the profanity filter that battlefield 5 is going to be putting on their uh, pc beta right profanity filter yes we don't need no stinking <laughs> profanity filter man yeah we it, got the fcc man it, we, we right we don't but <laughs> yeah it looks like battlefield 5 is putting in this this profanity filter for chat but it's not like the usual stuff that we see where you can individually mute players who are causing yeah, a problem i mean th- there are issues where some games you you if you want to uh, mute chat you got to mute it all so it's not an all it's sometimes an all or none situation now there are some games where yes you can specifically block out one or two people um but this is that this is a case where it seems like it's just they're overcorrecting. you know that we we all know that there's a lot of people out there with ignorant opinions and are just you know hiding behind a fake gamer tag and they want to hurl insults at people and you know and continue to hide you know the keyboard warriors where they're gonna they're gonna throw out these horrible things and you know, there's no repercussion. Well, now it seems like they want to put in this profanity filter where, all right, just kind of like the, the FCC, where I, we have pretty much established ground rules, et cetera. Right. And now it seems like they're, they're trying to overcorrect on, on a situation where it does happen, but not on the – it doesn't rise to the level where they have to put in filters. Yeah. That, that's my opinion, and I, I, that's, that's where – I, I just think there's so much faux outrage, and that when you have real legitimate cases where you have uh, 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 YouTube influencers and people that that are, are streaming on Twitch, etc., where you know they're they're calling them racial slurs or or, or or they're they're attacking their sexuality, and those are the people, but but they are not anywhere close to uh the norm or the majority yeah it just happens to be a very vocal minority which kind of makes all of us look bad but i it kind of goes back to the, the the madden shooting where it's like we police ourselves i i i firmly believe that sometimes when, when you you have these corporate entities they're trying to put on the best public face that they possibly can and in so doing they really kind of Overcorrect, and I think this is ex- that exact case. Yeah, and this is uh, Dice and uh, EA, and it seems like they're creating a larger problem by trying to solve a problem. Right. And and yeah, I don't know. I well, look, it's Battlefield Five. I'm not even going to play it. It's a shooter, right? So, but I don't know. I I, I kind of like that. I like. I had. I played Battlefield uh, the, the the World War One one. That was fun. I, I got a big kick out of that. All I, right, but I got Overwatch. Oh my god! Get a new game. No, it's it's fun. Well, you can go join the Shanghai Dragons now. Uh, 
Well, yeah, because yeah, because they just they released got, eight of their players. <laughs> They've got a lot of openings, Brian. They do. See, look, I, I should have kept on. I should have kept on training. Yeah, you should have, because you could have got in that uh, in that team. All right, do you want to talk about uh, Dark Phoenix and the New Mutants? Sure. Do I have to? Yeah. Well, you know, you kind of brought it up before the show. You wanted to talk about this. Uh, there's folks who are like kind of considering why bother. Well, look, I mean, I I got wound up last time we were talking about how uh, with the X Men now that now that uh, they're getting all these properties back, it's like I, I I just don't care. I don't want to see the same old rehash stuff because it's it's failed so many times. The only thing that remotely piques my curiosity about the new mutant stuff is that it's going to be like a horror film. That's about the only thing that really you know gets me going. Yeah. No. And and. I don't know. I think New Mutants can can be all right. I think that uh, Disney can continue to move forward with what they're establishing in that. I I think that the Dark Phoenix stuff was a little bit too too little too late. Yeah, here here's the thing with that. So <laughs> All of this kind of stems from, uh, you know, Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. I right. mean, that's the only one they kind of sort of even remotely got right, and they just kept milking that thing, kept milking it, milking it, milking it, where Days of Future Past, that was, that was, that was a horrible movie. It, well, it, it, right, it wasn't that good. But, you know, th- I think the same thing could be said for um, Marvel Comics, right, with the, the character of Wolverine. He is very beloved in the comics community, and they did it for years, fo- putting a lot of focus on, on Wolverine in the comics. Well, so. I mean, when you, you think about X-Men Last Stand, when, when they tr- did that Dark Phoenix story arc, I mean, that was, that was god-awful. It was I mean, it, it was yeah. It was bad, and why do we want to see this again? I mean, they're basically giving us that, the Last Stand over again, sans Wolverine. Well, but this stuff was God, already... are they going to bring him back? I mean, now they not. died in Logan. Please, please don't. No. And I mean, this stuff was already in production, right? So it, the, what are they going to do? I don't know. Sophie Turner, you know, she was in Game of Thrones. You know, she's, she's doing Phoenix. I mean, I like her and all, but I, I, look, I'm, I, I have no faith in them. I have no faith in them. I like your boy who plays Magneto, but he's just, he's, I don't know, he's a broody like, he reminds me of like an 80s vampire, a 90s vampire nice. broody is what he's like. You know? So are you he's su- Lestat. Are you well, suggesting? Who's the other guy from Lestat? Uh, the other guy. Uh, what? Pitt, Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt? Brad Pitt's guy, yeah. whatever. You, get, um, you know what I'm getting at, guys. Right. So are you suggesting they just go direct to Blu-ray with this stuff and, and not even get it in theaters? Or I, just can it? Honestly, yeah. I would I, just, just be done with it. Be okay. done with it. I, I, don't, I don't see why, why they really need to keep beating this poor dead horse. But that kind of uh, rolls into... Uh, Bring it instead of Blu-ray. Why don't you just bring it straight to a streaming platform? Because they're doing that with what the Doom Patrol and Alan Tudyk. Yeah. So uh, DC Universe is uh, still casting for Doom Patrol, and they brought in Alan Tudyk to play Mister Nobody. I had no idea this was going on, dude. Yeah. Good and, catch uh, on you. Good on you, Brian. Well, thank you. And Brendan Fraser is coming in as Robot Man. I, lo- I love Brendan Fraser. I don't. He, he he could he could play Dudley Do Right again, and I wouldn't care. Oh yeah, and he uh, was spotted at Dragon Con this weekend. Folks who really? were at the uh, was he out there drinking? Uh, I'm not sure. I think he's he was, a teetotaler now. Huh? He, he was at the Georgia Aquarium for some of the Dragon Con events. That's part of the larger Dragon Con uh, footprint. And yeah, there's people who are like, "Hey, buddy, you look like Brendan Fraser." Well, I am Brendan Fraser. <laughs> I have this Brendan Fraser mask on. Yeah. Or is it Frazier? Oh, right. So, yeah, no, I... I, yeah. All right. It's well established that I'm cheap. Yes. But that's not really my case with this paywall. I just I just think that now at this point, they're, they're, they're putting too much of these things behind a paywall, and it seems like they're spending a lot of money where... I, just, I would rather just watch the movie and be done. I mean, you know, I, I well, guess this is probably going to be like a, series? a like a series, right? Ugh. And and you know, these paywalls are just about choice, Dave. You know, you don't have to get all of it, but you get the things that you want. And but not- I would like to just see that one thing. I don't want to buy a pay like like all right. This kind of rolls into Star Trek Discovery. I I don't I don't care enough about CBS All Access. There is nothing else on that that I want to see except for Star Trek, but I refuse to pay for an STD. Well, <laughs> why don't came you came out wrong? Yes. Why don't you then just wait until the entire season was released, maybe by a month, watch it real quick and then, you know, cancel your subscription. Cuz that's right, that's just cheesy. 
Well, because I mean, also I'll, I'm, now that they got it, they're working on a season two, and, yeah. and Gregory Peck's kid or grandson is going to be it. Yeah, hot spocket. Right. Apparently, Jeez. he's going to be really hot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. This one is for the lady. Yes. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, are we getting close to a break? We've been close to a break. All right, that's cool. All right, well, guys, when we get back, we're going to talk to our boy (laughs) Scungy and get his pick of the week. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Boldly going where no bar has gone before. The Bad Wolf is a bar, restaurant, and game shop all in one. You can't beat our specialty drinks, fresh food, and a variety of RPGs, board games, and miniature games for sale or rent. Stop by and hang out or attend one of our regularly scheduled events all in a non-smoking environment. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill is located at 2010 O'Connor Street in Gretna or find us at badwolfbar.com. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill, where everybody knows your game. Mata Hari, Agent H21, is a spy fiction short story anthology about the famous dancer, seductress, and spy from World War I. Mata Hari, Agent H21, published by Pro Se Productions, has seven rip-roaring adventure tales about the world-famous super spy that features her battling her enemies by using any weapons at her disposal. Mata Hari, Agent H21, is available for purchase in ebook and paperback formats on Amazon.com. Own week in Geek Radio Show t shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Do you have a message or logo that you need the world to see? Then rely on the folks at Gretna Signworks to use their expertise to deliver your design. With over 15 years in business, Gretna Signworks can do commercial and yard signs, banners, screen printed t-shirts, magnetic signs, vehicle graphics and lettering, and so much more. Gretna Signworks also has an exceptional network of suppliers, so no job is out of scope. Find Gretna Signworks on Facebook or visit them at 2125 Bell Chase Highway today. Do you want to be more fit, more confident, and have a greater sense of well-being? Then join us at NOLA Aikido. Sensei Brian Levy and other instructors will guide you through the way of harmonious spirit as a means of self-defense, exercise, and wellness. NOLA Aikido is located at 3909 Bienville, or you can find us online at nolaaikido.com. Classes are available for both adults and children, so begin your journey today with NOLA Aikido on a greater path toward the art of peace. Now, back to the Week in Geek with local celebrity, Brian Held, hashtag LCBH. Here are your hosts, local celebrity, Brian Held, and uh, and that other guy, uh, what's his name again? D-squared, that's the name, voice guy. Welcome back, this is the Week in Geek. All right, Brian, so look, uh... What uh, is there anything else we missed, or do we? Ha- I'm just kind of stalling because I really don't want to do what we have to go do now. Um, I don't think there's anything that we missed. We should get straight to our favorite part of the show. Fine. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's pick of the week is brought to you by GameStop and ThinkGeek.com. Scungy's pick of the week. He might be an idiot savant. Woohoo! Scungy, what's shaking, bacon? Not a whole lot, gentlemen. Just getting ready for LSU football. <laughs> you got to there. You go, in there. there you go, Brian. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, man. What are we talking about today? Uh, well, I just got back from the GameStop Managers Conference in wonderful it, and exciting downtown Indianapolis that Ooh. has as much excitement as downtown Harahan, I mean, might I add. India no place. That's what it's called. Oh, India no place. 
Well, he did. Exactly. Scunji did say that the place, like you know, rolls up the streets at 10 p.m. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, man, it's like there's no, like after 11 o'clock, like everybody shuts their doors and it's a ghost town. <laughs> it's what makes it so hard to leave New Orleans, right? Because everything's open all it's the time. 10 p.m. Uh, parents, do you know where your children are? <laughs> I mean, it was 11 o'clock. They had a bar full of people, and they're like, "All right, everybody out." I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> all right, so what did you see at the GameStop 2018 Managers Expo? Well, we I saw a lot of stuff. Now, not only the cool thing is not only did I see video game stuff, but I saw like board game stuff and toy stuff and stuff like that. There's all kinds of things out. But there's a couple of things that I wanted to touch on that are really cool that are coming out. Uh number 1, uh Mario Kart. Everybody loves Mario Kart. They're yeah. making a mobile app for Mario Kart now. Oh, that's cool. So, so now you can mobile. get in, now you can get into street fights with people when you're playing and, Mario Kart. Exactly. A bus brawl uh, breaks out in downtown Indiana, no place. <laughs> exactly. Um, Assassin's Creed. I saw a lot of stuff on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, they're like the big things that they're toting for this game are uh, consequences. It's like this is the first time in an Assassin's Creed game where, depending on what you do, it'll have consequences later on in the game, and you can actually romance uh, <laughs> yeah. another character. And uh, they're bringing back the ship combat like they had in uh, Black Flag. Interesting. So, Romance, you're saying they're finally catching up to The Witcher? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said, all these are just little tidbits of stuff that oh, I saw. Like, um, uh, the Division 2 looks amazing. And the cool thing about that, the map that they're using for The Division 2 is a one-to-one rendition of Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. That's interesting. And also, the first three L- three DLCs are absolutely free. Yeah, wait, the Secret Service was cool with that. I mean, I guess it's not yeah. like it's a it's a big secret where the maps are, but now we basically gave people the ability to game plan how to attack Washington D.C. Well, they basically have, they have uh, Google Maps, Dave. I know, yeah. but I mean, it, it's like a battle scenario, though. I think I, look, I, I don't think I'm. I'm not trying to be Captain America here, but that it does give me pause, and I'm not trying to screw around for yeah. for once. I'm actually trying to be honest. No, that's I know fair. It's, it's, a, it's a one moment of clarity, Brian. Uh, no, I don't, it does it does seem kind of kind of crazy to me that that they would have like an exact rendition where it's like, okay, well, well whenever we're going to storm the Capitol, let, let's play a few rounds of the division, and then we'll go 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 on up there. Scunji, how well, big it, is the map? A, Do you know? It, it's a post-war Washington D.C. So okay, the, the, it will be in shambles. So okay. it's not like oh the clear streets and you know this house is going to be this building. No, there's going to be like stuff broken and stuff like that. Okay, it's all right. Well, like then, then I feel better. Signs. So it's a America! Re- a recreation of what we saw in Fallout Three is what you're getting. Basically, at. Yes. That was, kind of that like that. Except time. it's going to be like this street, this street, that and they'll street. have ghouls. So, okay. So and the beta for that is coming out really soon. Oh, um, nice. They are, uh, and uh, also along with Ubisoft, they're doing a lot of, uh, they're still chugging on with their Rainbow Six content. They said they're not stopping anytime soon, and they're going to keep doing that. All right. Um, Spider-Man, I'm going to review this game next week. On ne- next week's show, I'm going to review Spider-Man. But just to tell you what I saw and what I got my hands on, the short amount I got it, OMG, guys, this game is amazing. Yeah. Hey, th- did you catch any of the Puddlegate controversy? Oh my God! People on the internet just need to take a volume and calm down. Wait, what? <laughs> there's a, apparently there's a puddle in the game, uh-huh. and there's uh, outside like you know promotional footage, and then there's gameplay footage, and something about the puddle wasn't rendered properly in the gameplay, and so they're like, "Look at this puddle! Oh my God, the game's gonna suck! It's gonna be have terrible <laughs> graphics, yo!" Know? Puddle, yeah, a puddle. People need to get a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Can, 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 can you, you play like basketball in it though too? Can I, I you don't play know. basketball. Jump into yeah. a little little pickup game. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. All right. What else? Speaking you got? of basketball, at the conference, I got to meet Dr. J. Shut up. Yes, sir. Man, he I was promoting you. NBA 2K19, and I was like, I saw him over there. I'm like, I jumped in, jumped in line right away. You bet. You better have gotten his phone number so I can bring him on the D League. <laughs> I got the Hamburgs contact. Maybe I can get it to you. Yeah. All right. So what about NBA 2K? I don't know. Is that really our audience, Brian? That's uh, not, not our really. audience, but yeah. the D-League's audience, definitely. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Um, uh, okay. So this was funny. Call of Duty Black, o- Black Ops 4. All right. Now, the funny thing about it, yes, they got another Black Ops coming out. They got the Battle Royale mode and everything like that. The bad thing is, is that Spyro the Dragon got more of a cheer and applause than Black Ops 4. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. 
<laughs> it was it was like so that's just going to show like how that's done. That, that's, um, that tickles me. There is a partnership with Lego and Overwatch happening. <gasps> Wait. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard about that. They're making like they're making Legos. Interesting. Yep. I, I can't say anything more, but there there is a partnership happening. That yeah, that 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 kind of sort of broke a few weeks ago. It, it was like halfway substantiated. You know, they they yeah. had like one or two sources, but not enough to really go to market. With it's it. happening. Nice. Right. Okay. It's you happening. heard it here first, only on the Weekend Geek. <laughs> yes. Um, Battlefield Five. Um, it got pushed back because it didn't want to compete with Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption. Well, but apparently- they also said that they have a. The Battle Royale mode, I can't tell you the name of it because they haven't officially announced it yet, but uh, I will tell you that their premium, there's no premium for Battlefield 5 like there was with Battlefield 1. Everything is free. All right. Well, that's kind of hmm. cool. That's right up Dave's alley. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan that's of free. That's favorite word. Well, and I guess they have to do that for competition with uh, Fortnite and uh, uh, Player Underground battlefield or whatever PUBG. well they're yeah. actually listening to their community of the community has been actually telling them hey we want this we want this we want this so they listen to them and you know hey so your voices can be heard if it's loud <laughs> oh, enough it's gonna be like we want this we want this and then after they spend all this man time man hours and time doing yeah. it they're gonna be like all right we've moved on to something else Sorry. right peace out <laughs> <laughs> um hitman 2 uh, is uh, as a very good, it's a classic game. Ever it's been out for a while. Well, for the first time, you're going to be able to play Hitman co-op. Interesting. Um, what? And yes, and you will be happy, Dave. You can literally steal candy out of a baby's hand. <gasps> yes, <laughs> life is worth living now. <laughs> Terrible. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. <laughs> it's awesome. You know me so well, honey. Yes, I do. Um, I also saw something on Rage Two. Uh, coming out, which Rage 1 was short but great. Um, it's got no load screens. It's going to have a huge open world, and nothing's going to load. So that's always good when you have that. Um, Doom, they didn't show us a lot, but they showed us a little, like, three-minute gameplay trailer, and it was the bloodiest, glorious thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Um, along the lines of, like, other stuff, um, GameStop's going to be selling a D and D mod. We started selling D and D modules like starter kits. What? Well, yeah. One of the bonuses that you get is a Rick and Morty D and D module. Oh my god! Nice. No. Nice. Yep. That's pretty. So, cool. Wait, how do you get it? If you get it when you buy it, it's a download that you get when you buy it. Oh. Okay. Um, and uh, two more things. Uh, Call of Cthulhu has a brand new video game coming out. That is a first person, not necessarily shooter, but more of detective because that's in that oh, Arkham saw, world where yeah, you're being a we, detective. We, yeah, we saw out. some gameplay of that. That looked that looks scary as I heck. got to put my hands on it, and it is. I mean, it's one that you want to play with the lights down and uh, headphones on. It's going to be something that's going to scare the crap out of you. All right, Scunji, we got to go to break. So give us one more so we can hit the road. They are making these things called arcade one ups. We're going to be having them in our stores soon. They're 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 four hundred dollars, but it's a four foot tall actual arcade machine. So you can have like Rampage or Street Fighter or Asteroids and Centipede in your home. What? Nice. I, I can yeah. just go over to your house though. Yeah. I know you can go to my house, but what if you want to have one at your house? Uh fair point. How much is it? Three hundred. I mean three ninety nine. So it's and they come with multiple games on it. All right. Hey Scungy, are you gonna be doing any play of Spider Man on your Twitch speed? Uh, I'll be doing it next weekend. I'll be doing it probably on Friday night. So, yeah, I'm going to have some stuff for it. All right, and that's Rev Scungy on Twitch. So make sure Rev to keep Scungy an eye out Twitch. for that. All right, well, thank you, Scungy. No problem, guys. All right, and, uh, of course, Stage 2 of the Overwatch World Cup will take place next weekend, September 7th through the 9th. Make sure you get in for the highlights on that. There's too much stuff going on next weekend, Dave. Amen, brother. All right, when we get back, we'll have our guest, Chris Sanchez from Mad Cave Studios. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Do you want to be more fit, more confident, and have a greater sense of well-being? Then join us at NOLA Aikido. Sensei Brian Levy and other instructors will guide you through the way of harmonious spirit as a means of self-defense, exercise, and wellness. NOLA Aikido is located at 3909 Bienville, or you can find us online at nolaaikido.com. Classes are available for both adults and children, so begin your journey today with NOLA Aikido on a greater path toward the art of peace. Bo 
boldly going where no bar has gone before. The Bad Wolf is a bar, restaurant, and game shop all in one. You can't beat our specialty drinks, fresh food, and a variety of RPGs, board games, and miniature games for sale or rent. Stop by and hang out or attend one of our regularly scheduled events all in a non-smoking environment. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill is located at 2010 O'Connor Street in Gretna or find us at badwolfbar.com. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill, where everybody knows your game. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid, is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Do you have a message or logo that you need the world to see? Then rely on the folks at Gretna Signworks to use their expertise to deliver your design. With over 15 years in business, Gretna Signworks can do commercial and yard signs, banners, screen printed t-shirts, magnetic signs, vehicle graphics and lettering, and so much more. Gretna Signworks also has an exceptional network of suppliers, so no job is out of scope. Find Gretna Signworks on Facebook or visit them at 2125 Bell Chase Highway today. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Autobots, transform, and roll out! Welcome back into The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D-Squared Will. Brian Held. Brian, we have a very special guest on the line. We absolutely do. Our guest tonight is Mr. Chris Sanchez. He is the digital media manager for Mad Cave Studios. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. Uh, thanks, you guys, for having me on. Absolutely. So, I guess first question out of the gate is, what is Mad Cave Studios? Well, Mad Cave Studios is an independent comic book uh, publisher, and what our slogan is is that we make uh, uh, comic books that are fun, inventive, and just exciting, and comics that we want to read, basically. Chris, tell me, what uh, what titles do you guys put out? Well, uh, currently our titles we have are, are Battle Cats and Midnight Task Force. Battle Cats is sort of this grand fantasy, uh, medieval fantasy epic with anthropomorphic cats, so it's sort of like Thundercats mixed with D&D a bit. Nice. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, so they got a tiger, and so I'm an LSU Tiger fan, so immediately was, I gravitated toward the tiger. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and then our Midnight Task Force is our sort of cyberpunk detective story um, about a detective who has schizophrenia and how that impacts um, basically his... Uh, Detective. <laughs> Does he go interview people twice because he forgot which personality interviewed somebody? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be a good gag. <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. All, all right. right. You I heard it first right here. Yeah, just credit the Week and Geek radio <laughs> show, Chris, all right? I'll, I will do that. No, that's It'll cool. Be like in the annual issue. Yeah. Awesome. Now, one of your big titles uh, that you got a lot of focus on is Knights of the Golden Sun, right? Yes, yeah, so that's a title that's currently in previews. Uh, Currently, you can order that through your local comic shop, uh, and that's our brand new biblical epic uh, and sort of a historical fiction take on uh, angels versus demons. Ooh, nice. okay, not yeah, no, that is cool. That's always some good stories. Um, of course, you know, like preachers on right now, so you got a little bit of that. I'm, going I'm, on. I'm thinking supernatural Sam and Dean. That's you know, yeah. that's my jam. That's cool. Yeah, it's more, it's more like ancient, and like uh, I guess preachers like more modern day. It's this is more uh, ancient history, sort of following. 
still going through historical uh, biblical touchstones, I guess. Um, and then following like angels and the arch and archangels and how they interact. All right, that's fair. Now, one of the biggest things that's tough for a lot of folks. Um, I mean, I've I'm a lifelong comic book fan, so I don't mind this as much. But uh, a lot of people have have a tough time with single issues. Um, do y'all collect this stuff as trade paperbacks? Yes. Uh, after our single issue runs uh, a month after release, we released uh, a trade paperback and Battle Cats. Right now, it's currently with the first trade out. Okay. No, that's great. So Battle Cats, you got to trade, and then I guess the other ones are going to be coming eventually. Yeah, yeah. Our next set of Actually, next week is uh, Midnight uh, Task Force number three, and that's a four issue run. And then after that uh, ends its course, uh, we'll release the trade on that in December. All right, no, that's cool. Now, one of the big things that that I know you wanted to talk about is you guys are currently doing a talent search. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yes, uh, we're we're running this talent search now for about two months, uh, and it's basically trying to find four writers and four artists. Um, and all this, all this information is on com. And we're currently running this for two more weeks. And just for artists to send their scripts in and for artists to send, you know, pages in. And we would pick uh, four winners each. And uh, we would uh, announce the winners at New York City Comic Con. Wow. All right. So that's... Uh, what is it? Mad Cave Studios? All right. I'm, I'm going to go Google it while y'all are talking. Yeah. All right, what is it? Madcavestudios.com, Dave. Thank you. Yes. All right. Talk amongst yourselves. No, that's fine. And that's uh, New York Comic Con October 4th through the 7th, right? Yeah. We're going to be there in full force with uh, the, our writer and CEO who sort of like runs the creative aspects of it. And he's going to be there. And yeah. Most okay. of the Mad Cave team is going to be there. All right. It came up in the Google search. It did. It, yeah, Google works like that, Dave. So, what the fuck? yes. All right, cool. So, um, I, I'm assuming that with this talent search going on uh, for artists, for writers, that uh, you've got more titles coming out. Yes, and that's that's more of our uh, how what we're doing t- talent search for is like they would each get they would pair up and then each get a, an IP that we own and. So later down the line, they would uh, we would publish that their story in that, and yeah, we're uh, for this this year we've had uh, since we've uh, gone Diamond Publishing, uh, we've had three titles this year. But next year we're planning on expanding and expanding and expanding. See this this is when it's good to be the live listener here in the local radio audience because I'm gonna have to go back in the podcast and delete what I just said because each submission should be based on one of the two Mad Cave comics, Battle Cats or Midnight Task Force. So my schizophrenia double uh, interview thing, <laughs> I just gave away my plot. Oh man. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, Dave Dave is a writer. He's he's got yeah. a story published. Dang so. it, man. Two pu- two stories. Oh, two. I yeah. sorry. No, that's what cool. Have? Awesome. Well, um now how long have you guys been around? Well, we've actually been around since 2014, um, just going to cons and doing the local scene and sort of pushing our books online and doing that. But just this year, we've been in, uh, we've been accepted into Diamond, which means any comic store in America and beyond, actually, can order our book. Hell's bells. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you guys are based out of Miami. Do you make it up further up the coast at all? Uh. For as part of shows and stuff, yeah, I mean, yeah, we do. We our last show, we just went to, to Chicago, and before that, we went to Seattle, and obviously we're going to New York. Um, but and that's another thing for next year is we're planning on expanding, um, oh. and going to the definitely more cons. All right, no, that's cool. Well, Wizard World, uh, New Orleans is coming up January fourth through six. Y'all should stop by. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, I'll bring it over to Boss Man. No, that's great. Cool. Well, um. Any uh, any closing thoughts on uh, Mad Cave Studios? Definitely give us the uh, web address, all the social media. Oh, yeah. Well, it's madcavestudios.com, at Mad Cave Studios on all social media platforms, really. Um, and, yeah, support your local comic shops. That's all we really ask for. No, definitely. That's super important. All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us all about Mad Cave Studios. And now i got to start writing. Yes, God dang it. you do. And good luck at New York this October. All right. Thank you, guys. Good luck on everything you guys do. All right. Hang tight for one second. Guys, stay tuned. When we get back, 
We're going to close out the show as we always do with This Week in Geek History. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Take a look overhead. Hey there, there goes a spider man. In the chill of night at the scene of a crime. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Boldly going where no bar has gone before. The Bad Wolf is a bar, restaurant, and game shop all in one. You can't beat our specialty drinks, fresh food, and a variety of RPGs, board games, and miniature games for sale or rent. Stop by and hang out. Or attend one of our regularly scheduled events all in a non-smoking environment. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill is located at 2010 O'Connor Street in Gretna or find us at badwolfbar.com. The Bad Wolf Bar and Grill, where everybody knows you. Your game. Do you have a message or logo that you need the world to see? Then rely on the folks at Gretna Signworks to use their expertise to deliver your design. With over 15 years in business, Gretna Signworks can do commercial and yard signs, banners, screen printed t shirts, magnetic signs, vehicle graphics, and lettering, and so much more. Gretna Signworks also has an exceptional network of suppliers, so no job is out of scope. Find Gretna Signworks on Facebook or visit them at 2125 Bell Chase Highway today. Mata Hari, Agent H-21, is a spy fiction short story anthology about the famous dancer, seductress, and spy from World War I. Mata Hari, Agent H-21, published by Pro Se Productions, has seven rip-roaring adventure tales about the world-famous super spy that features her battling her enemies by using any weapons at her disposal. Mata Hari, Agent H-21, is available for purchase in ebook and paperback formats on Amazon.com. Welcome back to The Week in Geek. Don't forget, you can listen to previous episodes on the iHeartRadio app at The Week in Geek Radio Show. Here are your hosts, D Squared and Brian Held. Welcome back in, and thank you, Voice Guy. You set you set it up for me perfectly. As always, we want to strongly urge you to check out our website at twigradio.com. Check out our Facebook page at the Week in Geek Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio and the Instagrams, The Week in Geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, if you missed any part of tonight's show or you want to catch your favorite part again, you can always find us on Spreaker.com or download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. We're also on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, the iHeartRadio app, and at WRNO.com. And your mama's house. Oh, jeez. Yes. All right. Is there any? We, we didn't talk about the sonic attack, Brian, the, the Cuban embassy that, uh, that remember, all these uh, diplomats were having, like, headaches and all sorts of weird issues they were having? Right. Well, and apparently now they're saying it might be microwaves. Yes. So, <laughs> are, I mean, are, are these science fiction, uh, these, you know, this is not future science, weapons? I don't know. Maybe. So I, I, everybody used to talk about how microwave weapons were going to be the weapon of the future. But uh, I don't know. The Cold War ended in, what, 89, uh, somewhere around there? Yeah. When did the Cold War end? I'd have to look or, it up. Or did it? Oh, jeez. Dun, dun, dun. Write that into your cyberpunk novel. <laughs> there we go. Yes, I'll do that. Or I'm going to write it into that, uh, the, the, uh, 
Mad Cave Studios. Yeah. There you go. This week in Geek History. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my God! This Week in Geek History is brought to you by Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmade by Nancy Hansen, read by Brian Held, available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. This Week in Geek History. Yes! Oh my gosh! Da-na-na, da-na-na. All right, Dave, you got to guess this first one out of the gates. I hate your face. I, well, And I think you hate this movie, so on <laughs> oh, August 27, 2004... Directed by Jared Hess and starring John Hedder, Efren Ramirez, and John Grease. It is... John Hedder? Yeah, come wait, on. You said three dudes? Yeah, I said three guys. Isn't it... Is, wait, wait. Who is it again? Is uh, John Hedder the, 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 the tall, lanky guy? Yeah. Is it Napoleon Dynamite? There you go. Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite. Yes. Uh, this, that doesn't belong on our show. Why not? Because it's technically not nerdy. It, what, what do you mean it's well, technically... It's not geeky. Come on. Dude, he wears glasses. He's got doesn't he have you're braces. You're stereotyping, okay? We, we both have glasses. Yeah, you're stereotyping. Don't body shame him. Uh, I'm not body you're shaming. Body shaming Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, come on. How do you live with yourself? Oh, That's geez. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet this out. Brian's oh, body God. shaming on the air. No, I but I think that Napoleon Dynamite exactly fits our. Shut up and eat your dang quesadilla. Exactly. <laughs> What's that? All right, here's a really old one on August 28th, 1844. The Count of Monte Cristo is first published in a uh, French journal in 18 different parts. Uh, publication 18 runs different through, parts of France? Uh, no, it, the journal, 18 different articles. Oh, were so the they, they were already trying to bilk us out of money back then, huh? Yeah, it was like a so free France teaser. started it? Yeah, a free teaser with DLC for the next 17 issues. Son, so this has been <laughs> going on for years. Yeah, yes. It's all a conspiracy. Yeah. It is all a conspiracy. I mm-hmm. knew it knew it no but i like the county count of monte cristo that's good stuff and of course uh v liked it as well who's v from um v for vendetta oh vichy yes all right all right another really old one Uh, august 31st 1842 the u.s naval observatory is one of the oldest scientific agencies in the united states is authorized by an act of congress Yes. No, really. Yeah. It's uh, a depot for the Navy's charts, navigational instruments, uh, chronometers. Do you mean watches? Uh, I, I maybe chronometer is a is. A, it sounds like a watch. Yeah. yeah. And um, apparently, they're calibrated by timing the transit of stars across the meridian. That's coming up. Believe it or not. Really? That that made it into this week in geek history. It did. Yeah. You just got to wait for it. But so you just, you just made it. Well, we're we're gonna make it again. All right, you ready for the next one? Sure. Uh, on August thirty first, two thousand and nine, the Walt Disney Company announces that it's reached a deal to acquire comic book published Marvel Entertainment for four billion dollars in cash and stock. Yes. Wow. And the world was never the same again. It wasn't. And now with Fox in the fold, it's. See, the house of the mouse, man. You better watch out. Yeah. You better watch out. Oh, do you have opportunity in there? The Mars rover opportunity? No, I don't. There was, well, there's this cool article because uh, they, they might give up trying to talk to uh, Opie. Uh, there's a literally, and wrap your mind around this. There's a planetary sandstorm going on all over Mars. Okay. And so since the opportunity is solar powered, it's been uh, like like a five-day sandstorm. And so now uh, the panel, oh, no, like like a month Month storm, and so yeah. now the panels are completely covered, and they can't communicate with the uh, with opportunity, and so now they're wondering if they're ever going to be able to contact it because now now the, the winds have the sandstorm has died down. Now they're just kind of hoping that the the wind kicks up and blows all the sand off it. That'd be interesting. I know. So, but I don't know. It was a, it was what a nine month deal or a three month deal, something like that. And yeah. now it's fifteen years later. Yeah. So yeah. No, they they got NASA's a lot out of got that. it on lock, baby. Yeah. What's next? Um, Squirrel. September 1st, <laughs> 1982, sees the founding of the United States Air Force Space Command. Really? Yes. So, 
This is not the Space Force. This is the Space Command. Oh, Space Command. Yes. So what did they do? They're uh, responsible for space and cyberspace as well. And cyberspace? Yes. Are you so, just screwing with me? No, I'm not. I'm, U.S. United States Air Force Space Command is a legitimate entity of our government. But what do they do? Well, I, I told they you. command space and cyberspace? Well, I, yeah. If I mean, it has the word space in it, we got you covered. I'm sure space at that time command. in the eight, this was Pigs 82. In space. So we were still probably at odds with Russia a whole oh, so lot. so that's when War ter- Games came out. Yeah, so, you know. Is, is that the one where they, they have the Stargate built? Too, I mean, what, underneath look, that big mountain. What that was? Uh, Ronald Reagan was president. They were talking about Star Wars, yes! right? You know, having America. satellites with lasers on it and stuff. Uh, if only we could go back to those halcyon days. Oh wait, we might be back there soon. Uh, well, <laughs> no, no politics. Dave. Yeah, I know. All Hal- right, I just wanted to use the word halcyon. All right, yeah, no, that's a good word. <laughs> What's that? Um, on September second, nineteen eighty. The California Pacific Computer Company releases the role-playing game Ultima One. No. Only for the Apple II computer? Yes. Yes. Yes, that was my baby. Yeah. And it's funny because um, it had some I- illegal op codes in its programming. No, so we could really? only work on the Apple II, like the the 2 Plus, the, the 2E, 2E yeah. 2C, all that. It, it didn't, right. it, you right. couldn't finish the game. Right. So... But, uh, yeah, it was uh, old Lord British there, uh, Richard Garriott, was the game's developer <laughs> who um, who did that. And it was um, one of the first ones, if not the fir- first commercial computer role-playing game and the first commercial game to feature tile yeah, tile graphics to represent the environment. So, Good times. Big yeah. deal. Look, look how far we've come from Zork. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zork was so interesting. Yes. What's what's next? Um, your birthday time. Birthday time. All right. Uh, on the twenty seventh, uh, Vic Mignogna. He is an American voice actor. Um, he does uh, Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist, but he also portrays Captain James T. Kirk in Star Trek Continues. Oh yeah, yeah Chris Pine is still. They, they, they might not lock it down. They're going to end up canceling Star Trek Four. Maybe they need to get Vic. <laughs> Yeah. Vic can come in. He looks pretty good. What, are they going to yeah. CGI uh, Pine's face on somebody yeah, and he'll do it? He's close enough. He, we're, he, we're voice actors. We have faces for radio. No, no, he, he looks pretty good. He's good. Oh, you're scoping him out? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, all right. What's all right. <laughs> on the 28th, Amanda Tapping, of course, uh, Samantha Carter from uh, Stargate. Yes. Yes. I, I already made a Stargate reference. Look at that. I know. That's serendipity. Yes. Uh, uh, we're living in halcyon days, Brian. We, oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, on the 29th, Carla Neal... Uh, Gugino, she was uh, Sally Jupiter in Watchmen. She was also Lucille in Sin City. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't like Sin City. Okay. I couldn't make it through it. Oh, no, it sucks. I didn't watch the whole thing. Couldn't do it. Uh, On the 30th, uh, actor, comedian, and writer Louis Black. (laughs) I really like his stuff. He's he's a good dude. Uh, On the 31st, Chris Tucker. Come on, oh, man. Oh, Ruby Raj? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was also in uh, Rush Hour with uh, Jackie Chan. Yep. Yep. Yes, he was. And uh, on the second, Keanu Reeves. No, huh? Yes. Yeah, Most he's... triumphant. Yeah. All right, Brian, what are we doing this weekend? We got a whole boatload of crap going on, don't we? So once again, on Wednesday, September 5th at the Sanger, starting at 6 p.m., I will be one of the judges for the Star Wars Costume Contest the winner of which will get four VIP passes and a commemorative poster to attend the LPO's Star Wars in concert at the Sanger this 7th and 8th. So that's next uh, Friday and Saturday. All right. uh, also, on the 8th, we will be having the uh, live reading of Star Wars Episode One as it should have been, and uh, I will be your narrator for that. So come on so out. who wrote that? Um, was, this, was, it, was it a group effort or something? It was this guy, Doug. He wrote it, um, and we're trying to use this as a vehicle to launch more projects from Doug. So we are taking donations at the door, but it is a free event if you would like to stop is, by are, and check this, that out. You're trying to do like like the old radio days like, yeah. like with uh, Foley artists and stuff? Well, they're going to have a laptop for, for the sound effects since it's you know all sci-fi. But... All right. Well, 20 seconds. Okay. Anything else? Um, no. You know... Um, Okay. Have fun at the rest of the Dragon Con, guys. No, oh, forget them. Yeah. Till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. G F L. Your new 
new home for Walton and Johnson. News Talk 99.5 WRNO-FM, New Orleans, and iHeartRadio station.